Good morning. Good morning. Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we're thankful. Be with Brother Larry and the leadership of Brother Ken, Lord. We just ask you to be with each one of us here today in this congregation, Lord, that either in person or online, we just ask you to bless our families as, that we represent, that we ask you to watch over us, care for us, and keep us in your will. And, Lord, we ask a special blessing for our pastor search team. We know that you've got your man selected, Lord, and, we just ask that you'd give each team member the wisdom, the discernment, and, joy, and a joy in their heart, Lord, as we continue this process. And we ask a special blessing for Brother Rob as he brings us the word, Lord, that you hide him in those words, that it may bring us closer to you. And we ask, Lord... And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning. It is so good to begin a service this way. We're so thankful for how the Lord works in people's lives. And this is Mr. Kyle Augustine. And he came to see me several weeks ago. And uh, he shared with me that he had given Jesus his heart and asked if I would baptize him today. About uh, three years. Um, We have a good and faithful God, and it may be that today during this service, or even now, the Lord is speaking to someone's heart here. It's our prayer that you will say yes to whatever he leads you to do, and you will never regret it. Brother Ken. Amen. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord and hallelujah. That's a good way to start a service. I like that. Wasn't it good to see Brother Sammy up there in the baptistry this morning? What a blessing. We're so thankful for Kyle's decision and his uh, decision to follow in a believer's baptism and be obedient to God's call in his life. Well, we're thrilled that you're here today. Welcome to Fairview. It's been a great week. It's a great, beautiful day today, and we've gathered in his house to worship him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen? Amen. We welcome those of you who are watching online. We're glad that you're watching. Hope this will be a blessing to you. If you have a second, if you're a guest with us, there's a card in the pew rack in front of you. You can scan that QR code and register your attendance with us today, or you can just fill out the card manually and drop it in the wooden offering boxes as you leave the worship center this morning. We're so glad that you're here, the house of the Lord. Let's stand together and lift our voices in praise to King Jesus. Oh, good to be here in the house of the Lord today. He's worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. So let's lift our voices to him. Give him all of our hearts this morning. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison door. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Yeah, come on. Let's go in the house of the Lord.
church. Well, it's time for our kids to slip on out for worship kid style. So guys, you go ahead and make your way right out here through door number one. We've got some adults that have been praying for you all week this week. It's okay. We'll help you, sweetheart. It's okay. All right. There's your buddies. Okay. There they go. <laughs> They're strength in numbers. Well, it has been a, uh, just a wonderful week this week. We had an incredible day yesterday at our prayer conference. God used Dr. Parker in such a powerful way, and I'm so thankful for our prayer team and all the work that they put into that event yesterday. They just did an amazing job, an amazing job. So when you see them, you just thank them for that. It's, I told them this was the first annual, and then they, they sent back and they said, Who said annual? I said, Well, I, it went so well. Let's do it again next year. But uh, it was just a great day. And then, of course, that was right on the heels of uh, just a wonderful day of celebrating our good friend, our brother in Christ, um, Stan the Man Rector. We just had a great time celebrating his legacy, his family, his life, his testimony. You never had to wonder where Stan was in regards to his relationship with Jesus. for us to sing this next song, not knowing what we were going to be facing. and So I just want to encourage you when it comes time, and you'll know when the time is right, to stand and sing with us when we all get to heaven. Let's worship. Thank you. 
Our Father, who art in heaven. Yes. Don't interrupt me, I'm praying. But you called me. Called you? I didn't call you, I was just saying a prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. There, you did it again. Did what? Called me. You said, Our Father, who art in heaven. Well, here I am. What's on your mind? I, I didn't mean anything by it. I was just, you know, saying the Lord's Prayer. It, it makes me feel good. All right, well, go on. Hallowed be thy name. Hold on. What do you mean by that? By what? By hallowed be thy name. It means... It means... How am I supposed to know what it means? It's just a part of the prayer. Okay, what does it mean? It means honored. Holy. That makes sense. I guess I've really never thought about what hallowed means before. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Do you mean that? Well, yeah, I guess. What are you going to do about it? Do about it? Well, nothing. I just... I think it would be good if you could get control of things down here the way you have control of things up there. Have I got control of you? Well, I go to church. Well, that's not what I asked you. What about that temper? Quit picking on me. Excuse me? I thought you were praying for my will to be done. Shouldn't we start with those praying for it? Like you, for example? I mean, I guess there's some things I could work on. I do want to know what it means to be more free. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll work together, you and me. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Lord, but we need to hurry this up. This is taking a lot longer than normal. Give us this day our daily bread. Aren't you supposed to be doing keto? Wait a minute here. Praying is a dangerous thing. You could end up changed, you know. And you called me, and here I am. But don't stop now. Keep on praying. I'm ready for what's next. Well, go on. I'm scared. Scared of what? I know what you're going to say. Try me and see. And forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. What about Susan? See, I knew you were going to bring her up. She lied about me. I'm going to get back at her. What about your prayer? I didn't mean it. Well, at least you're honest. It's not much fun carrying all that bitterness, is it? No, but once I get back at her, it'll feel so much better. You won't feel better for long. Think of how unhappy you really are. I can change all of that. You can? How? Forgive Susan. And I'll forgive you. It doesn't seem easy, but it does seem like the right thing to do. Thanks, Lord, for working through all this with me. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. How about that? There we go. I don't know if you've had that kind of experience ever in prayer or maybe this week as you've been praying through the Lord's Prayer. Last week as a church, we said for the next 30 days or so that we wanted to pray the Lord's Prayer each and every day, uh, three times a day. When we wake up in the morning, pausing at lunch, and then in the evening, sometimes before we go to bed, to reflect on the day. And to put it in the context of prayer, that prayer of Jesus that's found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. And what I think that helps us do is to grow in a praying life, uh, to, to become more in tune with what the God is doing around us and understand that prayer is not just a practice for a few moments, but like the lady on the video, I'd never seen that video, but this week I ran across it and I went, you know, that is my experience a lot of times when I slow down and realize that prayer isn't just me saying words to God, it is me listening for God to speak back into my life. And I hope that uh, you and I will have that experience. In fact, today, the, the, the message, last week we focused on looking up in prayer. And today we're going to focus on looking in 
and prayer. And when I say look in, not to look to ourselves for, uh, for what, uh, the, as if we have the answers. Before I move through that, I, what, what an awesome message that we've been led in. Thank you, choir, uh, this morning. Thank you, Brother Ken, uh, in leading us. I know all of you, and um, you'll remember a few weeks ago, I, I ran out of gas on the way. Um, Brother Ken said I had car trouble. I had car trouble because the guy driving the car didn't stop and get gas. And so um, thank you for that kind uh, kind cover. But it's not all my fault. Um, it's my wife's car. Now, I'm not blaming her. I'm not blaming her. But she has a unique ability to leave the car right near empty when I get in it. But she said, Rob, I, I got some gas, but uh, my gas gauge, I think, is messing up a little bit. And so it may not have as much as you think. And I was like, oh, okay. And it had like four bars. And I thought, well, I can get to the gas station over there. And, and, and I did. I got to the first gas station. And I got to the second gas station. And I thought, well, I can make it to Louisville. That, no problem. Well, I didn't. And, uh, and it started chugging and, you know, all that. And I thought, oh, man this car it, it's got a few miles on it a little like its owner but uh it 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 still works you know and but i thought this is bad and it shook a lot and i was like this is this is not good so anyway i called my wife and my daughter and i said hey bring some gas just in case my wife said you did you stop and get gas as soon as you could and i said yes i, I was going to and uh lied but anyway uh i said no i didn't and she said i told you and i said i know there'll be plenty of time for that uh to tell me but uh uh but but she they came and rescued me gave me some gas i was on my way it's all good i got here that morning um after the service um brother stan came up and said heard you had car trouble by running out of gas <laughs> and he just laughed he thought it was the funniest thing he said, it works better when you put gas in them. And, and I was just laughing. I was like, who is this guy? And he was just, I was like, I like him. Uh, my, my, uh, my love language is uh, snarkiness. So um, I, I knew he and I were kindred spirits. And, and then we talked a few minutes. And he taught me something. He said, oh, your car was shaking because of fuel injector. And he, he, I could tell this dude's brilliant. And then uh, we walked over and I said, man, how, how can I pray for you? He said, well, as a matter of fact, this week, and he began to share, and then Lisa came, and um, they shared about the diagnosis that he had recently had, and and I'll, I'll never forget, just, we, we stopped, and several of us were here at the front, and I said, can we just pray, and they said, like, yeah, let's, let's definitely do that, and um, and I remember Stan saying, and then Lisa, after he passed, reminded me of this. She said, from day one, since we've known this, what we've prayed is that God would be glorified. Whatever the outcome, that God would be glorified. And I believe he was, even though it didn't turn out maybe the way we would have hoped. what was his and my wishes, which is to glorify God even through this. I think that's the heart of what Jesus was teaching us about prayer, about letting God have control of our life. And yeah, we wrestle with it like the lady on the video. We, we wrestle with it. We struggle with it. But, but Jesus, when he taught us how to pray, he, he, he said, I, I want to take you to the inner places of your heart. For God to be glorified in us, that means it can't be about us. It has to be about him. And, and so when we're learning to pray by looking in, there's a work of God. Now, it's been a lot of fun to look up this week. Um, uh, the staff, uh, some of the staff members said, hey, we're looking up this morning. It was Monday, and there was the eclipse going on, and they sent me these pictures. I thought this was great, several pictures of them looking up, and you may have looked up. And then later in the week, I had the opportunity to look up during the storm. I thought my roof was going to come off uh, during one of the storms. Up. 
You're learning some things. In fact, when you look up to God in prayer, he invites you to experience intimate interaction as he helps you look in to the realities of your life. As you look up to God and you get to know him better, he begins to allow you to look in to your own life and the realities of what is happening around you. I was reminded of that, that so much of prayer is this intimate relationship with our heavenly father. Last week we learned uh, when you pray, uh, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Um, This week my dad uh, turned 80 years old. Uh, celebration that's him holding a uh, when he played football back in high school and uh, he loves Mexican food so they, we stole one from the Mexican I mean uh, we borrowed one from the the Mexican foods uh, restaurant and and it was just so much fun to celebrate him um, we call him Doc and and his grandkids said hey as we're celebrating Doc's birthday could we could we all dress up as versions of Doc and so if you'll notice, some of them, all of them have the bald head, a lot of them have the bald head, you know, uh, going on. They didn't shave their head. They went and bought it at Party City, but, you know, that kind of thing. But one was in Mexican food because he loves Mexican food. One had American flag on because he always loves uh, um, the America is always wearing that kind of thing. One was Doc walking in the mornings. Uh, one of them was a blueberry because he eats blueberries every morning with his oatmeal. Um, one of them, um, my, my niece on the left, she's holding a, one of them by the way it's like doc in a windsuit in the 80s that was pretty cool like i don't know where they got that windsuit but it, we got a picture of him in something like that and then and then one was my my niece who uh i didn't is on the left she has a tie on she's holding in there a dead gerbil not a real one but like a pretend one and she said i, I this is the doc i remember that one night after he came home from preaching a revival he came to help me bury my gerbil and then he did last rights over my gerbil in the backyard and so she brought the shovel and the gerbil and and the the reason I tell you that all these different pictures and moments uh uh, one of them's Johnny Cash (laughs) uh he loves Johnny Cash so uh, but but uh the, the reason I tell you that is because what I realized through that was my kids know their grandfather and they love him they know aspects of him. They know, uh, they, they, they know what he loves. And, he, and, and then one of the things we gave him was a, a picture with five statements from each one of them. It turned into, I think there were 80 of them, uh, 80 statements about memories or things that they admired about their, their grandfather. And, and, and mine, uh, I was included in that, father and father-in-law, those kind of things. But it, and it was all written in a kind of a picture kind of thing, and and when they they, they said D- dad said, uh, could y'all just read those? Everybody read your own, and so we did. It was really cool, and what I realized is we loved him. We know him. Just think of that in the the context of this prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Wasn't some formal religious moment where Jesus said, I'm about to take them to church and we're going to make them, you know, be very religious. That's not what this prayer is about. This prayer is about relationship and it's not just you and God. It is us and God. I know that's not good, good grammar, but it, it is, it is, it, it's all plural. And, and as we're praying to God, we are praying in the context of the community that we're a part. And like you say here a lot, Fairview is family. I would say to you, you're praying in the context of family. Isn't that cool? So, so frame that. When you look up to God in prayer, he invites you to experience intimate interaction as he helps you look to the realities of your life. So when Jesus taught them to pray, he said these words. He says in chapter 6, Matthew 6, we're going to actually start with verse 5. He says, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues 
and at the street corners that they may be seen by others truly i say to you they have received their reward but when you pray go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and and your father who sees in secret will reward you the idea there is 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 an intimacy with god and he'll reward those who don't know god for they think that they will be heard for their many words don't be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him pray then like this would you just say it with me as in a spirit of prayer our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen so jesus taught them to pray notice this he says and when you pray and then in verse 9 he says pray so let's just begin with a quick definition of prayer last week i shared this with you and 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 this is the definition i gave you prayer is communion and conversation it's being in the presence of and communicating with the triune god father son and holy spirit it's, communi- it's communion, being with someone, but it's also communication and conversation, talking with someone. Yesterday was a phenomenal day at the prayer retreat, and Dr. Parker taught a lot on prayer, the who, what, when, why, and where. Find somebody that was there if you weren't able to be there and get the notes. They were fantastic. And it was just a good reminder and, and lots of wonderful stories and scriptures just in a comprehensive way reminding us the power of prayer that it's communion being with someone it was neat this morning just uh watching a husband and wife walk in from the parking lot uh into church this morning and as they were walking along um they were holding hands and they were just walking along i don't think they were talking they were just being with each other and all of us guys were like he's making us look bad you know is what we were thinking uh, but but it was such a cool thing and i commented on it when they came in i said hey i love that that's such a beautiful beautiful picture and take that earthly relationship this is the, the primary relationship of a husband and wife's life but think about this relationship of just being with just being together communion and then conversation the words that come the interaction that comes and, and jesus taught us to interact with jesus in fact the word pray that he uses means to exchange the will of someone it means to interact in such a way that you're you're taking your will and you're bringing it to the father and you're saying i want my will uh i I want you to to shape my as we pray we are exchanging our wills we're interacting with the lord and exchanging our wishes for his wishes for uh, we're exchanging our will for his will that's why uh, psalm 37 4 is not about us it's about god delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the remember the desires of your heart why because as you're delighting yourself in the lord he is shaping your desires and your desires become what delights the lord that word delight actually means in uh, psalm 20 uh, 37 4 it actually means to be pliable it, it, it be pliable before the lord because you want to please him and he will give you the desires of your heart it's a beautiful picture 
So when we look in prayer, when we look in in prayer, we learn some things in this praying life. First of all, we learn the potential. In prayer, God reveals the potential you have as his child. Don't ever forget that. But we have this good, good father, right? And when we pray, he is teaching us more about what it means to be with him, to be who he has created us to be, and to do his will. So when we look in these words, and there's so many phrases, and by the way, we're going to apply this at the very end of the message to what we read a moment ago uh, by looking at uh, five statements that come out of that, principles as you pray. But right now, I, I just want you to broadly, when we look into prayer, we see the potential. But we also see the problems. When we begin to pray, God reveals the problems that limit your life and my life and the lies that bring separation and shame. See, it goes all the way back to the garden, right? God put them, did everything, provided them, walked with them in the cool of the day, Adam and Eve, and he gave them one. And in prayer, Jesus reminds us that don't pray like those that would do it as hypocrites. You know what hypocrites are? It's those who wear a mask and everyone thinks they are one thing, but the truth is they are another thing. Now, the truth is we all kind of struggle with that, right? We all have our mask on. You see a part of me, I see a part of you, and sometimes we don't know all of those things. But he says when you come in prayer mask off the book of praying life that i've mentioned to you says this the only way to come to god is by taking off any spiritual mask the real you has to meet the real god i think that's why sometimes we struggle in our prayer life because prayer requires a humility and an honesty before god that can make us really uncomfortable that's why I like that video so much. She knew some things that God wanted to talk to her about, and she didn't want to talk, talk to him about it. She didn't want to hear it because she might have to exchange her will for his. She's a lot like us, right? There's some problems. Looking in exposes the problems and shines the light on the lies. Here are a few. Uh, it exposes the problem of self-righteousness. And the lie is, if everybody was perfect like me, anybody live with somebody like that? If, if you're, you're um, not like, I don't know, it's probably you. <laughs> if everybody was perfect like me, remember Jesus when he talked about, the two, talked about two men who went to the temple to pray and one was, uh, was a Pharisee and he stood at the front and he's like, God, I am so thankful that, that I'm not like that man at the back of the room, that publican, that sinner. And then the other man, the publican at the back of the room, he wouldn't even lift up his eyes to God. He knew he was a sinner. And he just, he, he's beating himself on the chest and he's going, God, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said to those listening, who went home justified before God? It wasn't the one who thought, I got this. It was the one who came in humility and honesty before God and said, God, please have mercy on me. When you look in to prayer, you start seeing your self-righteousness, the things that you go, you know, I'm, I'm not that bad, but I'm not as bad as him or her. And, and, and instead of letting God really look into the realities of your life, another problem is self-centeredness. Lie number two, it's all about me. Remember, it's not. This is the story of the rich young ruler who went away sad from Jesus because he had great wealth and he couldn't let go of the things that he valued for himself and he was self-centered. 
So self-righteousness, self-centeredness, self-reliance. Matthew 6, 25, when Jesus talks about why do you worry about the things that you can't control? And he says, why, why all this anxiety in your life? Well, a lot of times it's because it's a real need, but a lot of times it's because we think, and the lie is this, if it's to be, it's all up to me. And Jesus says, look, your Father in heaven sees your needs and he'll meet them don't live in a self-reliant kind of way and then there's self-destruction luke 12 20 if it feels good it must be good and all these problems began to manifest and there's subtle shifts in our spirit and there's secret sins that that we begin to harbor and keep like little pets as if they won't hurt us and then there's stubborn rebellion sometimes and all of these when we look in man that's the blackness of our heart that god wants to shine his light on and 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 to expose and to bring that sin out of the shadows into his radiant light and to say your will be done god in my life as it is in heaven so looking in hey are any of those do any of those resonate with you are there aspects of that when you pray that you really sense who yeah that's a that's a when i'm saying your will be done on earth as it is in heaven you're saying the beginning place is your life your kingdom come your will be done in my life as it is in heaven and that brings me to uh, the, the next um, the next statement and and that's this that that we find the purpose in the intimate interaction of prayer god works in and through your life paul miller in his book a praying life says these words as you develop your relationship with your heavenly father you'll change you'll discover nests of cynicism pride and self-will in your heart you will be unmasked None of us likes to be exposed. We have an allergic reaction to dependency, but this is the state of heart most necessary for a praying life. A needy heart is a praying heart. Dependency is the heartbeat of prayer. I think he's right. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth in my life as it is in heaven in prayer we relinquish control and we invite god to take over a surrendered heart is the place where god will start his good work and his children so when jesus is teaching us to pray he's saying learn to come before god with a surrendered heart relinquish control and invite god to do what only he can do to take over Paul Miller once again says the kingdom comes when Jesus becomes king of your life I think that summarizes it pretty well so as we take all that truth that that comes and we we look at the potential we look at the problems and we look at the purpose I want us to just take a minute to look in in light of the Lord's prayer let's apply what we've learned today and think about it that looking in to how Jesus taught us to pray we will be praying for first God's purpose and they're all going to be on the same uh, slide real quick just so if you want to take a look at that we pray for God's purpose your kingdom come your will be done in me and in the world last night but hadn't it been a crazy week like there was an earthquake before we went into the weekend up in new york last week and uh and then there was a eclipse on monday and then there were storms all week that were pretty scary then last night um and and you know there were reminders of life and death and the, the preciousness of life and the reality of death and then, then last night I was watching on the news and um, Iran had launched, um, had sent missiles uh, attacking Israel. You know, a lot of people were saying this, this is signaling World War Three. Others were saying this is signaling Armageddon. I don't, I don't know. 
I just know Jesus said something about wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, you know, all that kind of... I'm like... You know, I, only the Father knows when he's coming back, but it looks like the signs are pointing to me that we're closer than we've ever been, and it's a real good time Jesus could just drop on in here. And, and what it reminds me of is that when we come before the Lord, we are praying for God's purpose. If we're closer than we've ever been before to the return of Jesus, doesn't that mean that we may we should be engaging in the mission of Jesus with greater than intensity than ever before? And Jesus said in Matthew twenty four, in those and when he's talking about the end times, he says the many that the love of many will grow cold in that time. Well, my challenge to you, church. It's let's not let our hearts grow cold. Let's not let our love grow cold. But let's let the the fire of God be replenished in us, be stoked up in us. The passion for God's work to be so great that we're not just we're not just willing to go through religious exercises. We are people on mission with our Father and His Son, and we're empowered by His Spirit. Amen. A little pep talk there. That was mostly for me. Like, if you believe that Jesus might come back soon, then what is it that, it, that, that involves your life and his mission that has not been done yet? We may be in the last days before Jesus returns, but you may be in the last days before you go to the Father. Live with an intensity about your life as you invite the Father, that intimacy with him. My brother-in-law is a big character, and one of the things my dad loves to do around the house is catch squirrels because they've eaten up his, his roof. They had to replace his roof thousands of dollars. So he does not like squirrels very much, so he catches them and he takes them off. But my brother-in-law calls him the squirrelinator, and uh, and and he came. He he got out of his car, and and my brother-in-law, he's a funny, funny cat. And he got out of the car, and he had on this black robe, and uh, and and it, he looked like the Grim Reaper. And he had, to, you know, he he'd gone to Party City and found that too. And and before he had the squirrelinator on there, I thought, Tim, that's about. don't do that and he goes oh no 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 that's not all my costume and he brought up the squirrelinator but here's what I thought every day we need to be reminded that we're not promised tomorrow so live our lives with intensity I just went to preach and forgot where I was pray for God's purpose second pray for God's provision give us today our daily bread God knows what you need Yesterday I was driving up here. I didn't have any snacks in the car and I was praying the Lord's Prayer and I thought, man, I sure would love a donut. And I got here and you know what they had at the prayer conference? Thank you, Lord Jesus. It reminded me of that guy that, you know, he, 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 his wife had put him on a diet and uh, he, 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 but he went by Krispy Kreme and the hot light was on and it's a sin to pass Krispy Kreme when the hot light's on and not stop and get a donut is what I'm told and, and so he, he prayed Lord if it's your will I, 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 want, I, I need to go get a donut he said if it's your will it, just let there be an open parking spot right by the front door he went home brought his wife some he said, what in the world? You're on a diet. You're not supposed to be eating donuts. And he said, honey, I prayed. And I prayed of his Lord's will that there'd be a parking spot right there on the front row, in the, right before, in front of the front door. And, and he said, and on the 10th time I, I circled the parking lot, <laughs> the Lord made it clear. Pray for God's provision in your life. I, not maybe like that, but you, you pr- pray for God's purifying Forgive us our debts. That word forgive means to send away, to release, to not hold against. And the word for debt means, um, well, we know debt, but it's the result of having a debt. 
It's the after effects of the obligation. And listen to this. When you're looking in in prayer, you're saying, God, I know I've offended you and I'm indebted. God, I know I I owe you. But God, would you release me from that? And the force of this, this verb, uh, forgive our debts, is the idea of someone having already completed an action before you even asked it, but you're asking for something to happen. that he took our debt. He canceled our debt. He's not holding it against us, but we still have to confess our sin. We have to say, forgive. And, and, and when we're saying that, we're saying forgive our debts, but also forgive our, those who are indebted to us. Later on, just after the Lord's Prayer, that next verse, it says, if you, there's, there's this tie of if, if you want the forgiveness of the Father in your life, then you need to be willing to forgive others. Does that mean I'm not saved? No, I don't think that's what that means at all. I think it's saying if you are holding on and harboring unforgiveness in your heart towards someone, you are hindering the ability of the Father to bring forgiveness and cleansing in your life about some things. I don't know how all that works out. I just know the words of Jesus. You've got to live with the tension of that, right? Forgive us. There's a purifying effect. And then there's God's protection. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We'll talk some more about that next week. But we're saying, God, please watch over us. Yes, when I was watching last night, all those, um, all those um, bombs coming in, and they were intercepting them, and the, you know, jets were shooting them down, and the Iron Dome, and there were all this stuff that was going on. And they had this one shot, and the shot, I recognized it immediately, because I saw the Mount of Transfiguration up on the hill in the chapel that's built where Jesus said when, when he went to the Father and, and, uh, and, and, or, or the Mount of, of Ascension, excuse me, when he ascended to the Father, that was on the Mount of Olives. And I saw that chapel and it was a live shot with all these things going boom, 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 boom up in the air. And there it was because I know that, the, that where I was looking, that was also just down from is where the Garden of Gethsemane is. Just down from and just over from it is where the temple mount is and i'm thinking am i really seeing what i'm seeing the very place that jesus may return one day and put his feet on the ground on the mount of olives we're seeing all of this happening the people of god being attacked and jesus looking at the father going now now dad how much more how much longer? And the father's saying, just wait, son. There's more. There's more of my purpose that needs to be accomplished. There's more my people have to do. But we're close. Pray for God's protection. But one day, like we sang earlier, we will see God's power. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will know, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Mic drop. Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you taught us to pray in a way that is so relational and so personal. Thank you, Jesus, that you taught us to pray in a way that intersects with the realities of our life. In worship today, we've been reminded of such great truths. And Lord, you've comforted us by those truths. You've strengthened us. You've challenged us. And by your word today, God, we pray, we pray that we would allow you to search us. Do the the deep work of prayer in us today help us not to buy the lies help us not to live in the problems of self 
but help us to surrender to you and to live in your power in your protection in your provision come Lord Jesus as we pray bring us into your presence we pray in Jesus name I ask Amen. Let's stand together as we sing. The scripture reminds us that he loves us enough to let us come as we are, but he loves us too much to let us stay that way. And this morning invites us to come, come into his presence just as you are. sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let rescue begin come find your mercy oh sinner come near earth has no sorrow that heaven can hear earth has no sorrow that heaven can hear so lay down your
the Lord wants us to come, just like we are. Don't feel like you've got to get fixed or get dressed up to come to Jesus. You just come exactly as you are. Amen? Let's have a seat and watch these announcements this morning. Good morning, Fairy family. These are your announcements. Our Annie Armstrong Easter offering goal is $52,000. So far, we've collected $40,174. We will collect until the end of April. We will have a family catfish scholarship on Sunday, April 28th from 3 to 5 in the fellowship hall. We will have jumpers for the kids. Please register. We invite all mothers and daughters to join us for a Muffins with Mom on Sunday, May 12th from 7.45 to 8.45 a.m. in the fellowship hall. Please register. Register for these events at FBB Church. The baskets are at all kind of places outside the worship center of the sanctuary this morning. So stop by and grab one, and it'll help you pray through uh, as Dr. Rob is taking us through this sermon series on prayer. So we're excited about that. Well, let's lift our voices today as we close our service. Wouldn't it be great to be in the house of the Lord this morning, church? Praise the Lord. Let's sing together.